Hey, this is Lucian Smith in for Paul Gallo here on the Gallo Radio Show uh, on Super Talk Mississippi. We're coming to you live from the Trustmark Bank Studio. Life's beautiful when your bank fits you to a T. Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works. To learn more, go to Trustmark.com, member FDIC. Uh, well, with us here in studio is uh, Bradley Lum, the Deputy Commissioner for Workforce at the Mississippi Department of Corrections, and uh, one of the, the many great speakers here at MEC's annual meeting. Morning, uh, Bradley. Glad to have you with us. Morning, Lucian. Glad to be here. Um, t- so tell us a little bit, you know, I know you uh, took over Prison Industries, and now you're uh, running uh, MDOC Works and our, our Deputy Commissioner for Workforce. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what your focus is uh, at Corrections. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, When I took over what was then Mississippi Prison Industries, the goal was that we have got to change the perception of what people think about what we do inside and why that matters on the outside. And so we started doing some rebranding and really changing the narrative there because ultimately the goal is to create a pipeline to uh, employment for our prison system and for our inmates that are that are incarcerated and so what we did was over the course of about a year and a half or two years we we kind of built out a system and then the legislature kind of looked at and said all right this is something that we really need to take to the to the masses to all 18 19,000 inmates that we have uh, around the state and so under the direction of the commissioner uh, we we went through kind of a process and, and kind of created this new um, new department of, of workforce and now we've taken that and and really you know as we talked about right before we came on just the goal is to build a robust pipeline uh, where inmates know that when they come in they're on a path to an opportunity because for so many you know they're on low level uh, you know drug offenses and nonviolent offenses uh, and even those who have violent you know violent offense, offenses we want to make sure that we're putting everybody on a path because we know that 98 percent of them are getting out and we want to put people on, uh, on a path that leads to an employable opportunity um, and that gives them something that they that can uh, you know ultimately create a career out of and, and i assume i mean I, I know there's sometimes when people talk about um, folks who are in the prison system there's this natural uh, i mean they, they're they are stigmatized because of what they've done in the past. And sure. sometimes I think you have people who wonder in an in a environment where there are finite resources, you know, why spend money over there as opposed to people who haven't committed crimes. But, yeah. I mean, I would assume part of the goal here is avoiding recidivism. If yeah. somebody's got an opportunity, they're less likely to, to reoffend. Is Absolutely. That- and I think that ultimately the net positive from affecting this population is significantly more than, say, somebody who is just sitting on their couch. Because when – Somebody gets out of prison. Really, you know, you're looking at two uh, two pathways. One is a pathway that leads to sustainability. Another is a pathway that w- that leads to reliance on the government uh, and or committing further crimes. So, right. so you have a, a tremendous public safety issue that, you know, when I talk to our law enforcement officers around the state, um, they start to see the same folks all the time. And so, when you talk about just where our levels of law enforcement and our ability to recruit and retain and all those issues, if we really want to make an impact on public safety, then if, then we should be ensuring that those who get out of prison have every opportunity available to them to stay out of prison. And so that's why it's so important. Uh, recidivism certainly, but but bigger than just not coming back to prison, putting somebody in a position where they are on a path to a career to a sustain to a sustainable future um, that that will certainly affect uh, generations to come. Uh, what sort of things are we doing, um, and how does MDOC Works sort of play into to that piece of it? Yeah, so MDOC Works really is a work opportunity inside our prison. So we've got guys that are doing welding and, and um, you know, different types of metal, um, you know, building metal products. We've got woodworking. We've got uh, a print shop. We've got um, some sewing and garment-type manufacturing. We've got mattress manufacturing. Believe it or not, most of the mattresses that are produced for community colleges and four-year colleges in the state of Mississippi are produced uh, with us, with MDOC. Who works, and so we have real work opportunities that are giving people hands-on experiences to uh, be a part of a team, to be a part of a structure, a hierarchy within a within a, a shop, uh, so that they are learning those really soft skills and hard skills, so that when they get out, they're ready. But bigger than that, we're trying to take the model that we've built there and take it to the grander scale to all of our institutions and all of our regionals to ensure that we have career services in place, that we have support services, that we have. Uh, vocational training at all of our facilities so that it's equitable for anybody no matter what place you're at uh, just because you may not can get a job with MDOC works because we only really employ about 600 people um, we're giving everybody an opportunity to get a skill and a trade and to have the support system they need as they get out 
And do the, the, the things that MDOC Works manufactures, are those sold just to government entities, or how does that? No, you know, we, we do primarily do a lot of work for other government entities, frankly, uh, in the name of, of some cost savings, um, obviously being good partners as, as a state entity. Uh, but, but we also sell to the public. In fact, um, one of the things we're working on right now, we have not fully implemented the plan, but we really want to prop up a retail shop where people can walk in and buy a Adirondack chair or they can walk in and buy a set of wind chimes because those are things that we make on a day-to-day basis. And people, you know, frankly, p- the public likes to, to, to buy things that, that inmates make. I mean, there's, there's, um, you know, there's something positive to that. And so, uh, we, we really want to see more of our you know, retail side really take off where we're selling uh, products just gen- to the general public. And where does, when y'all, I mean, I assume, I know you're a non, it's not a not a profit-making venture, but when there's a, a, a profit of sorts, sure. does that get reinvested yeah. into the programs, or where does that go? Yeah, so every dollar that we um, that, that we make is reinvested into our reentry side so that we're ensuring that um, we're, we're not only growing the opportunities to work, but we're growing um, the support system. So not only on the inside, but then as they're getting out and having those support systems. So when they go into an employment situation, if they lose that job, they have a specialist that can ensure that they get a second job. So we want to reinvest all of the money and be good stewards of the money that we get and make uh, to, to ensure that we're putting everybody on a path. To, to sustainability, what, do the uh, do the inmates who are uh, part of the MDOC Works program, or, or uh, I mean, are they do they get paid for the time? Sure, they? they do. They get paid, it, and it just depends. There's kind of a state wage, and then there's a federal wage. Federal wage is dictated by uh, what's called the the PI program. Um, prison incentive enhancement program and it's, it's really kind of a, a, a fair market wage so if you if you're down in south mississippi and the average welder makes seven eight nine dollars you know an hour then they may make that same amount uh, oh, now really? some of that money goes back into restitution some of it goes back into there's certain things based on federal guidelines that it has to do and then so um, these are i had always assumed that they were getting paid like a quarter an hour or something there are some that are doing that okay. now um my hope and my goal and, and something that we got passed last year, so Chairman Barnett kind of, um, of of the Senate Corrections Committee uh, really spearheaded it, we instituted a work release program. So we have 25 individuals uh, in a pilot program that are going out to work every day, and the average wage for them is about $15 an hour. Wow. So they're going and working. A lot of them are working. We've got some private companies that we work with, but then we've got some public works uh, at some various uh, towns and cities around the metro that they're working at. So that is a program that we expect to really become a kind of a, 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 you know, a hub of growth from a work standpoint. And we would love to see a lot more people in work release as we move forward, as we show our successes. Um understandably so what are what sort of reaction do you get from inmates i mean are they generally receptive to these ideas or yeah. uh, or, or kind of resistant to it yeah i think you know the reality of just in general the correction system is that um we have historically not done a great job of this. We've not done a great job of putting people on a path to employment. And so the changes that have been made under this commissioner, uh, and this is all credit to Commissioner Kane and his vision, the changes that we've made and we've implemented uh, have started, you, you just you start to see folks being very grateful for the reality or, or for the opportunity of, of what their new reality is. And so um, we see that all the time, not only in the culture of what we're trying to, to create inside our prisons, better you know more paint on the walls better food all those things but also an opportunity for everybody as you come in you know what your opportunities are and we put you on that path uh and and you can start to see it i mean i think for most people for any of us being able to see what 10 years from now looks like is very important and uh we have not historically done that and so what we're trying to do is give people some hope uh, give people a vision of what their future can be and and then on the the political side, have you found the you know lawmakers, elected officials? I mean, is there, are they generally supportive of this, or is there a lot of pushback about why are we taking tax dollars and investing it here when we could spend it on you know education, law enforcement, hospitals, whatever you know, whatever you'd prefer? That's a good question, and and the reality is that since 2014 and some of the legislation that's been pushed on criminal justice reform, we've seen kind of an overwhelming movement towards fixing a broken system and i think most people recognize the reality that if we do this right it should lead to uh, less of a tax burden on 
uh, on the prison system and, and having to invest money in that, and then it should lead to uh, an opportunity where we have more tax-paying citizens that when they get out, they're in jobs, they're in opportunities. So I think that it you know it goes it goes both ways, and and you know frankly from our standpoint, what we're trying to do is ensure that we're not having to use tax dollars or, or at least using our tax dollars as efficiently as possible uh, and investing them in the right places to ensure that, uh, that that we're reducing that burden. That that makes a lot of sense, and I know you all do a lot of good work. You'll, you're on what, what time is your panel today? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yeah. Well, if you're uh, if you're not dressed yet, you got time, get on down to downtown Jackson for MEC's annual meeting, and uh, you can hear more from Bradley and a lot of other uh, great folks. Brad, thanks for thanks for being with us. Thank this you, buddy. Appreciate great, it. Hey, it's great to see.